Cool. Are we go? Yep. Okay. How do they understand the beginnings of Quakerism? For some, it was a mystical movement, Rufus Jones. For some, it was a movement out of radical Puritanism, left-wing Puritanism, Hugh Barber. Uh, Inward Apocalypse, Second Coming, Tim Pete, uh, Doug Gwynn, Ben Pink Dandelion. Or was it a holiness movement, a la Carol Spencer? Actually, it's probably all of those and more. Uh, if we take a look at the streams of influence of early Quakerism, you'll see that elements of all of that was in the genesis of Quakerism. Quakerism arose out of the English Civil War period, 1640s, 1650s, a period of radicalism, economic, political, religious, ecclesiastical radicalism, as people sought to reform society from the grassroots up. The diggers digging up common greens to bring them back into the common people's usage after they've been expropriated by the gentry. The levelers seeking to uh, level social distinctions in the class society of the time. We see elements of that in Quaker's refusal to doff the hat, uh, emphasizing equality, using thee and thou instead of you for those above them. Restorationism was a movement that preceded Quakerism by a good 150 years, rising out of the radical reform period following the Protestant Reformation. Those are the ancestors of the Hutterites, the Mennonites, the Amish, uh, the Anabaptist movement, sought to restore original Christianity, sought to go beyond even the reforms of Luther and Calvin and Zwingli to return Christianity to its purity of the gospel of the early church. And we see elements of that as Quakers believe that they were primitive Christianity revived, primitive Christianity restored. Apocalypticism. This is an apocalyptic time, the English Civil War period. They'd lopped off the head of their king in uh, 1649. There's an intense expectation that the millennial kingdom, God's reign, would be established on earth as it is in heaven. And for friends, they experienced that inwardly. That Christ is come to teach the people directly, one of Fox's great statements. That Christ is present in all the offices of Christ as prophet, priest, redeemer, lord, king, prophet. And that one could live as if the reign of God was present. So all of those counsels of perfection in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' teachings, applied here and now. And perfectionism, uh, rising out of a revival of Paracelsianism in England in the 1640s and 50s a movement linked to the ancient hermetic tradition, that there was that key that would unlock the mysteries of the universe, that would unlock not only the secrets of nature, you could turn lead into gold, but you could perfect human nature, turn our inward leaden nature, spiritual deadness, into vital spirituality, uh, turn our inward leaden nature into golden perfection. And you see that in Quaker understandings that we can perfect society, Fox's own vision, that we can come up through the flaming sword into the state in which Adam was before the fall, live in that original harmony. So all those streams of influence were present in society, uh, influencing Quakerism. That was the air they breathed, it was the water they drank, and so whether you go with Rufus Jones, Hugh Barber, uh, Carol Spencer, Pink Dandelion, and, uh, and others, uh, there's an element of truth in all of that and probably even more that we haven't even begun to explore. <laughs> Lordy. It's a windy day. Yeah. Quakerism, as we know, arose out of the English Civil War period, 1640s into the 1650s. And there were a variety of movements that were part of that Civil War. We'll start off with radicalism. And let's get naked, let your shame fall away like shedding blankets, let your fear and your identity hang around your ankles and let's run around, show the world the stuff we've found, the beauty we've kept hidden underneath these pounds and pounds of extra clothing, of shedding my self-loathing and replacing it with trust, I'm only here to love, I'm through with thinking anyone's the judge, come on, 